Dr. Mel and welcome to Dr. Mel's message. I have a prolific writer with us today. His name is John Brewer. And also we're gonna be graced with his wife, Mary Sue Brewer. So welcome the Brewers. How are you two? Fine. How are you, John? Um, aside from having a plugged ear, fine. Well, I will try. If uh, you need me to repeat a question, just let me know, because I have a feeling you have a lot to say, especially with 12 books already out there. So let's talk about you, the latest book that we're working on, and that's The, Patriot, uh, the Patriot's Journey, correct? Yeah, that's number 13. The 13. Well, tell us a little bit about that book. Well, um, I guess it goes back uh, emotionally to um, uh, the split in this country, the emotional split, the intellectual split between the left and the right. And uh, that came out uh, violently at times in the Vietnam War. Uh, and uh, the hero, and indeed uh, the heroine, uh, were both affected by this. And they took opposite sides and split up. Now, this book is considered an historical novel because it's uh, written, quote, as if it was in the 1970s during the Vietnam era. Is that correct? Yes. So, Starts about 1970. Yeah, about 1970. Were you in the Vietnam typically. War? Did you serve? Did you serve? I'm sorry? Did you serve? No. I've been very lucky. I was too young for Korea and I was too old for Vietnam. So I'm an observer. All right. That's fair enough. You certainly lived through that era. Uh, I was just a teenager at that time, and I remember it very, very well because my brother did serve uh, in the Vietnam War for us. So do you have just a particular interest in the Vietnam War or just history in general? Uh, well, it was a vivid time in the life of the nation, and uh, I, I can remember, I, I can remember uh, some of the students uh, in the lab where I was working, the graduate students uh, taking uh, sides in it. Uh, it was a, a strongly emotional time. And so that uh, was, I guess, the reason for the book because it involves emotions, uh, right. love, uh, the interaction of uh, national affairs with uh, the love between a man and a woman. Tell us about the main character in the book. I'm sorry? Tell us oh. about the main character in the book. Well, the male character is uh, intelligent. He's a medical student, uh, becomes a physician. Uh, he's well educated, so, and uh, uh, fairly big physically. But uh, he goes on, and uh, my male characters are people things happen to. He winds up having to serve in Vietnam as an army doctor, and uh, gets caught up in this, some of the politics of it and uh, winds up having the army pulling him out. He gets accused of uh, uh, crimes against humanity, violations of the laws of war and the army pulls him out. So he's basically trying to hide as a doctor. So he's on the night shift, but People are after him. And there's no way to escape, I take it. Well, right now, I want to show them the cover reveal and introduce my audience to your book. So if you just sit tight for a minute, I'm going to share my screen and everyone can watch the cover re reveal trailer.
let's talk a little bit more about your main character. Somehow this, the cover suggests that he comes back home with an injury. Is that correct? The cover suggests he comes back home with an injury. Is that right? Uh, no. All right. Tell like us a little bit about this. Start happening to him. He runs into a, a psychopath who is abusing a young woman, a patient who came in with injuries. And uh, the psychopath starts going after him. Wow. And eventually puts him into the hospital in a fight. Well, that explains because the that thing happened to him. How, how did you come up with this storyline? How did you come up with that storyline? Well, uh, I start out with a plot in my head and uh, eventually I'll start writing it down. I mean, it starts getting more and more elaborate. And often when I'm writing it, it gets more and more elaborate. So uh, sometimes I have to go back and rewrite it because it's gotten more elaborate still. Wow. Uh, but that's just how I operate. Uh, that's not the way I'm sure uh, real professionals do, but uh, I'll see something, say, on television that starts my mind thinking about a certain era, things start happening. And as I said, I always have a main male character because I'm male. Makes and sense. this uh, becomes more and more elaborate. Things I will see, things I read, things people tell me. Uh, these can uh, start me thinking about uh, a, uh, a plot. Well, let me ask you this. Uh, I know this is your 13th book, so I would say you're professional at this. What is your writing style, I mean, like? I mean, after 12 books, what does a day look like when you're writing? Um, well, uh, my wife, well, never mind. Uh, <laughs> The custom is to write like Ernest Hemingway. Okay. Very simple and direct. Okay, that's fine. But that's not how I write. I'm I my writing style is, is more literary. Sentences uh, are often more complex, too complex at times. Uh, she uh, points this out. Uh, <laughs> she has uh, been the missus. One of my editors. <laughs> yeah. Prices. Price is very low. I mean, at least I, I, I can't complain about the price. Uh, but uh, yeah, it, it, it's a more literary, more academic style because I'm an academic. Right. I was going to say that we both or are I academics was. in a way. We both have PhDs. Mine's not in biochemistry or anything. But let, let me ask you this. How old were you when the first book came out? Say again, sorry. How old were you when you wrote the first book? What year did you write? I'm sorry? What year did you write the first book? First one, well, let me explain something. I was diagnosed with prostate cancer, metastatic prostate cancer. It looked to me like a sentence of death. This was about, uh, 2009. Wow. And I've always had, well, the physician who attended me suggested, you know, if there's something you always wanted to do, you better get out and do it. You may not have, in other words, much time left. Okay, I've always had stories running through my head, even when I was in the first and second grade, always fantasies. 
And so I started writing, writing down one. Uh, several of my books take place during the First World War in Great Britain, Western Front. And the reason for that is the conditions were so dreadful that to me it had the paradoxical effect of being romantic. So, as I said, by now I have a fifth one, uh, 12, uh, 15th one underway. Wow. Um, that didn't show on camera. Hmm? That did not show on camera. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I see it now. A fire, a fire. <laughs> there you go. Impressive. So, when is that one coming out? She uh, she does the uh, covers too. Like I said, no, I but uh, five of my books take place on the uh, in that time and in, in that place. Uh, Incredible, you know. I have what I call, a, number one, I call myself a senior citizen. I'm 63 years old, but I have a lot of uh, elderly people over me that are authors now. And I just love the wealth of knowledge and experience that someone like yourself brings into a novel. And that's gonna be a long missing age uh, pretty soon, I think, you know, that those that truly were involved in that era won't be around anymore to tell the story. So I am glad that you have taken the time and branched off with the historical novels. So thank you for that. I think it's something that is very much needed. You know, now one more question real quick. Did you find it difficult at all to transfer into writing on computers and publishing? To He writes everything longhand. Ah, uh, there we go. First. Yes. And then uh, over the years, I've so, uh, slowly gotten him to uh, transfer that copy on, onto a computer so that I don't have to do it all. Right. <laughs> Let's just say my handwriting is uh, very idios idiosyncratic. And Most authors are, believe it or not. <laughs> Most authors have very bad handwriting, me included. And so that doesn't, yeah, that explains a lot with, with what you do. But someone your age uh, has seen a wealth of technology come and go, or skyrocket, I should say, such as the ability to self-publish. Have you always been self-published or did you go with the traditional author first, I mean, publisher first? Always, always self-published. Self Phenomenal. All right, now, one other thing to you, Mr. Brewer, if you have any advice out there for us youngsters and first time authors that will stumble across this, what advice would you give them about writing? What advice would you give about writing? Oh my. Oh my, well, let's have it. Um, well, I, I've given lectures on uh, self-publishing. My books are all self-published. Uh, this means uh, it's relatively cheap to uh, produce them, but uh, marketing is a major problem. Yeah. Uh, however, if, uh, if, if someone out there has a story in his or her, my, his or her mind, uh, a story that fascinates them, write it down. It could be published without any much problem, much expense. Uh, and then when you get it in your hands, that's your child. 
child of your mind, of your soul. And uh, yes, I uh, recommend that people uh, uh, first time, well, someone who was thinking of writing, go ahead and do it, get started. Uh, don't, don't die with it in your mind. I think that's a beautiful concept. And, you know, one of my own taglines, you know, I've written over 90 books, but one of my own taglines is I'm not, um, I don't feel right when I don't write. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I, I totally get all of this with you. And again, for those that have been watching, this has been an interview with John uh, Brewer. He has written over 13 books he has a new one that's out he's got another one that's coming out and he's just a very prolific writer his new book is called the patriots journey and i just want to take the time now number one mr burge thank you for coming on dr mel's message and sharing words of wisdom with us and i wish you the best success with this particular book and the rest of them to come thank you